Well, it's my privilege uh, this morning to introduce to you uh, someone for whom Light of the Desert doesn't really need an introduction because uh, I I I remembered back to 2010 that uh, um, I first met Tom officially at at a a lunch and uh, realized that Light of the Desert and Hope for Kids needed to begin working together and uh, uh, cut to the chase in 2014. Uh, uh, we, we started making trips to, with Tom and uh, with Hope for Kids International to, to the, in this case, Uganda. And uh, little by little over the years, things have, have grown to a, a much bigger a, a, a connection. And uh, uh, we are so blessed to count uh, uh, Amazing Grace Church in Kasola, Uganda, as, as, as our sister church, brothers and sisters in Christ, and, and uh, we're so thankful for that opportunity. And, and uh, many of you sponsor children, and, and so many other things are going on. So, Tom, I, I want to invite you up right now, and, and uh, uh, we're excited to have, have you here. You always uh, inspire us, and, and, uh, and, and you... As I said in the opening prayer, uh, that that uh, last Sunday we talked about the fact that uh, sometimes uh, one of the tendencies that we have as Christians is to become complacent and lukewarm, oh, and uh, and and I think that um, being connected with brothers and sisters in Christ in Africa and being connected with so many of our brothers and sisters here that, that, that are uh, Hope for Kids inter, inter, International is yeah. one of the things that really helps me yeah. and, 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 and brings me back to the passion that, that, cool. that, that Jesus really is alive. That's awesome. So anyway, let's, let's, let's pray for you thank as you, you begin. You. Lord, we thank you for Tom. Thank you for the vision that you gave him many years ago to begin Hope for Kids International. But more than that, we thank you that it's his heart for you, for Jesus, the inspiration that, that, that you give him every single day to uh, uh, be a light wherever he goes. And, uh, and, and, and now we just look forward to what you're going to uh, bring to us through him. And, uh, and, and we just pray for your, uh, for your inspiration and, and, and just give Tom the words, exactly what you want him to say today. Amen. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Uh, I'm a little disappointed. I, knowing it's Valentine's Day, Paul and I had talked a couple weeks ago, and I thought he was going to sing Betsy a love song up here. But... <laughs> no? Not going to happen? Okay. All right. Well, good morning, everybody. And uh, wow, what a great turnout. And there's quite a number of our staff here, I sure Love seeing you, and I know there's a lot of people online today. I know we sent an e-blast out to our, our supporters around the country uh, a couple hours ago, and so gave them the link for Light of the Desert, so uh, hopefully a number of you are, are watching today. I know I have some family watching, and so I want to make sure I say hi and all of that, and, and uh, thanks, Paul, for the opportunity to be here. Love our partnership, like you said uh, it started out uh, lightly, and then it grew and grew and grew, and now you were really fully engaged. And many of you are, are supporting Casolo and, and uh, sponsored kids and all of that, so thank you. And that's part of why I uh, travel, very limited this year, but to be able to see our partner churches and personally say thank you for your involvement. And uh, you'll see in the PowerPoint today that uh, this has been a, a very, very special uh, uh, year for us, even in the middle of a pandemic. So uh, your generosity has been a part of that, and we appreciate that. Let me just quickly uh, uh, introduce a few of our staff here. First of all, Ken, you and Susan stand up over there. You know Ken. They were a part of this church before they moved. And, and uh, yeah, did you drive the 1943 Jeep over today? Oh, I got to see his Jeep that he's restoring. You know, the guy, he's our executive director. He's the banker, we call him, you know. He's got, but this guy's got skills as far as restoring things. This is the second Jeep to restore. I loved it. And your bike is cool, too. But anyway, uh, uh, great, great being with you uh, this week and, and having uh, dinner at your house and all. It's been fun for me. I've been in town for a week. I spoke at... Uh, 
uh, Hope Church last weekend and got to see a lot of our, our sponsors and donors, and I've been visiting people this week, and, and uh, uh, it's just been great to be with our, our team, and, and uh, I love being here. Besides, it's uh, five degrees in Oklahoma on my ranch this morning, and they're expecting five to ten inches of snow today with 35-hour winds. My flight was changed to Tuesday, so oh shucks, I have to stay here. But anyway, that's another story. So Angie, where's Angie? Angie, she's our Vice President of uh, International Development uh, and over all of our water. So if you're involved in water, she's the one that heads that up. Melissa, she uh, does my scheduling, works in the development department. Amy, Amy, stand up. She's our, she's our director of uh, travel and all, and she kind of threatened she wasn't going to show up today unless you had your donuts. <laughs> Did you bring your own? Huh? No? And you're still here? Yay, yay, yay. And uh, uh, Mark, where's Mark? Mark is our uh, senior developer and uh, great, great part of the team. Uh, is that anybody else? Oh, Kelly, I'm sorry. You know, everybody has masks on. It's not just that I'm almost 70, you know, that I'm going, who's that? But anyway, uh, Kelly uh, is our head of all of our projects. And she's been busy this year because COVID stalled us for a couple weeks, but because of her effort and Angie's effort, well drilling continued, and so did our, uh, all of our building projects uh, around the world. So, uh, yeah. And then my sister Rachel's here. There. Stand up, Rachel. She's the head of uh, Hope for Women and Dress a Girl, and she's got some of her biggest fans here. Uh, love seeing you guys. And... Uh, uh, so I think that's it as far as our staff. We've got lots of great volunteers. You all know Patty. If you have any questions about any of our children or whatever, Patty, you know all the answers, right? 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 Yeah. And then a former employee, she quit on me. Uh, Kristen was our attorney and, and did our travel. She's here. And DJ, he loves when I mention him. Uh, not really. That's why he's sitting in the back. Well, my dearest friend and... Uh, 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 one of our great supporters in travels everywhere, and we're both really frustrated. We were actually in, in the Philippines for about 48 hours in February when things began to shut down. We had to get out and uh, took some of the last flights out, and we've been stuck ever since. So are any of you itching to go? Brian, you guys? Peggy, yeah, you ready? Oh, we're just like... <laughs> but anyway, we're, we, uh, we're carefully looking at all those possibilities of traveling and all of that. Well, let's kind of peek at uh, our... Uh, uh, for you that might not be familiar with who we are uh, or haven't heard from us for a while, in a while, I want to go through our slides. Am I just going to do this? Are you flipping slides? You are. Okay, so when I do this... All right, that means in, in Oklahoma, that's a twister's coming, okay? But here it means next one. All right, all right. Where are we? Do, yeah, there we are. Oh, there's my family. Oh, I feel so bad for them. I mean, seriously. Because Sarah, my wife, and, and Grant, my son, and Sophie, my daughter, and then we have another girl living with us, they have been working nonstop the last couple days because everything is frozen up. And all our horses are, are thirsty, and we have chickens and geese and ducks and... Guineas and, yeah, lots, oh, donkeys, horses, cats, dogs, uh, cattle, no alligators. Uh, but anyway, everything's frozen up. So they're out there, Grant, my son, is out there with an axe chopping a hole in the pond so they can get. And then she sent me a picture last night that they'd hauled about 300 gallons of water to our big, big stock tank. So anyway, appreciate them. My wife is a, works for uh, FAA and is working on a NASA project right now, so she's, yeah, a little more brilliant than myself. Okay, this little twist. Oh, there I am. There's, there's my favorite horse, Clover. He's 16 hands. There's the donkeys. Yeah, and the cattle and the horses and all. There's our latest. Your favorite, right, Peggy? Yeah. <laughs> That's Maverick. <laughs> and here's, here's the foundation of... of as, as hope for kids. Our mission is to restore hope around the world by engineering, uh, by empowering kids to break the cycle of extreme poverty through four principles, dignity, health, joy, and love. In our foundational scriptures, James 127, religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Um, 
one of the ways that we do that is our international missions. We're involved in Uganda, Cuba, Guatemala, Mexico, Philippines, Romania, Israel, and India, and Nepal. And of course, all those uh, trips are on pause, but keep in touch with us, keep watching, because as soon as that country allows us in and we feel it's safe uh, for our teams, we'll begin slowly to uh, return to our international trips. Um, and that's such a big part. These are some of the highlights of some of our people in different places in the world. And, and uh, uh, the impact it has when we're personally there is, is really special. That second picture in is, is a, a, a special project of Rachel where they do a spa for the women. And even our young men, like this young man, uh, wash the feet of that lady. And it's, it's really a, a special thing. I don't know who that is on the far right over there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, dear children, well, okay, that's good. Let's go on. So, in the last couple years, we've, we've uh, secured a property, uh, a 26-acre campus in Tuoro, Uganda. That's our headquarters and all of that. And some really exciting news this week. Uh, was it this week or last week, our, our, our vocational school opened up, and we have 26 students that have started there now. So we're so happy. Our students are starting to go back to school around the world, and so we're really happy about that. And this is some of the construction that's going on, uh, our, our headquarters there, and it's fully going on while we, while we speak. Uh, and we're really grateful for that, and Kelly heads all of that up. Our medical outreach has been you know, a big blessing around the world, wherever we would do a well or, or uh, uh, have a project or in the, in the, to the indigenous people of, of the Philippines, we would take medicine to them and have medical outreaches. And that's so critical at this time because so many people are, are suffering deeply uh, in, in the rural areas. And this is something that, that we'll, we'll expand on in a, in a second. But uh, safe water, you've been a part of, well, look at there, seven, is that accurate now? 771? Wow, 776 deep water boreholes restoring hope and improving health. We did 80 wells last year in the middle of the pandemic. Absolutely amazing, yes. Yeah, yeah, and uh, here is uh, uh, the, that you have been a part of 12 wells, and there's the name of those, those villages that you have changed, and now there's two that are going on right now. Uh, this was the, uh, this is the current water source of the Casolo Primary School. That's, that's, and pictures do nothing for what the reality is, do they, for you that have traveled with us. So thank you for that. That's huge. Thank you so much for doing that. And as a result, this was kind of a surprise to us, but hundreds of people have been baptized at our, wa at our water dedications. And the reason is, I, I like to make it personal for you. If you lived in one of those villages and, and you believed in a loving God, Yet your children were dying because they didn't have access to safe water or medicine and basic uh, shelter and education. How loving would your God, image of God be? And I, I, I know what I'd be doing. I'd be complaining and shouting and saying, God, where are you? Because look at this. And, and, and you have not really been very kind and loving here. And when we drill a well, that symbolizes that God shows his love to them. And we've heard so many stories of how did God find us in this rural area, in our little village. God must truly love us. So many people give their life to Christ. They trust in Christ. In Uganda, most people have heard about Christ. It's, it's kind of a Christian country in a lot of ways. In the government, you'll, you'll have prayer meetings and different things like that. And, and so when they see this, so clean water, a little portable swimming pool, why not baptize? So it's, it's part of the joy of, of uh, uh, and, and uh, of the power of bringing water. It's a very, um, some people have said, well, it doesn't sound very spiritual. But I think more people have come to Christ through that. And you now understand how they would translate that, that God truly loves us because of that. This is an upcoming walk for water on March 7th uh, over uh, not far from you guys up on Happy Valley, uh, Norterra. Uh, and you can sign up or be a part of that, walk virtually or walk in person. And that's our next one coming up. So uh, be sure to check that out. Um, this is the adopt a, a village in Kosolo that your, is your adopted village. And... Uh, 
Uh, we equip and restore needful villages with essentials for successful ministry and healthy future through our Adoptive Village program, and yours is Kosolo. We're finalizing the new land purchase, preparing to install the new latrine, and begin construction on the schools. And as I mentioned before, two new wells are under construction. So thank you for your love for, for that, for Kosolo. Wow. Yeah. And we're involved in the uh, Feed My Starving Children. You're probably familiar with them, maybe packed for them. And we're on their A-list. And, and uh, uh, we, we just shipped a container, right, Kelly, just a couple weeks ago? Is that right? Yeah? Pardon? In Uganda on the 22nd. Wow, great. So how many meals are in that shipment? 40. How much? 270,000 meals are on their way, arriving the 22nd. And part of why we're able to do that is because of our Charity Navigator four-star charity, which is really a high rating. And only a, a small number of NGOs and, and uh, nonprofits are, are able to get that uh, annually. And that's something that's renewed annually, so we're really uh, appreciative of that. Notice I talk with my hands, and she's rolling because I'm, you know, and it wasn't time, you know, guy. <laughs> so uh, i got to tell you a little story. I was at a sale barn a number of months ago, and I wanted to buy some calves, and I had some specific ones. I wanted Charlays, which my brother Willie had raised when I worked on his farm, so I wanted Charlays. So I bought a couple of them, and a couple uh, Angus uh, uh, calves came out, and, and I'm watching the monitor, and it's not moving. So I said, I wish they'd turn that monitor. And my, my, my partner said, Larry said, I think you just bought them. And, and I did because of this. <laughs> so anyway, I just sold them. So anyway, I won't t- tell you more details about that. But, uh, <laughs> but anyway, if a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. So that's a very challenging scripture that we take literally to respond to the needs uh, of, of what, we, what we see out there. Uh, child sponsorship, I can't say enough about this. This is really, to me, the foundation of everything we do. To sponsor a child, and you sponsor many of them, uh, and uh, for a dollar a day, $31 a month, you can change the destiny of a child and uh, uh, bring, bring uh, quality education, health care, nutritious meals, uh, emotional guidance with the message of Jesus. Let me see what the next slide is. Ooh, who's that guy? That, that was cute. I forgot to mention that. Anyway, education is the key. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. And you can see our kids from different parts of the world. Let's see what that... Yeah. These are some of the kids I've sponsored, and what's so cool about this is I started sponsoring these guys when they were little kids, three or four years old. And now to see them in college and to see how successful they are, it absolutely changed their destiny. So... I personally believe it. I sponsor a number of kids, and if I didn't, uh, you know, believe in it, I I wouldn't do that. Uh, Yeah, this is is cute. What? 150 children have been sponsored by loving members at Light of the Desert. What a nice little family shot there, too. Okay, so this is what I was looking for. Eight solo kids still need to be sponsored. I have six. Did you say six? Oh, it says eight up there. Good, Patty, you've been taking people by the neck, all right? So we have six left. They're on the table out there. Uh, you, can, you can sign up today. You can sponsor them. That'd be wonderful if, when you walked out of here, all those kids were. For those who are online, these kids are not available online. But if you go to our website, uh, hopeforkidsinternational.org and forward slash sponsorship, you will find there that you can sponsor children online. So we invite you to do that. We have many, many children that are waiting uh, for their prayers to be answered and have one of us commit to a dollar a day. And that's really been special. Oh, this is, this is hard. Um, Gianna Santiago Birthday Fund, it was... Her birthday yesterday, and she celebrated in heaven. This is, whew. Uh, a lot of you know Carmela. She is just, 
the dearest person and, and has this passion for kids all over the world. She's like their mother. And Gianna and my daughter Sophie grew up together in Anthem and then uh, last year uh, went to Uganda together and they had this dream of of uh, helping babies. They love babies. And so we just kicked off because it was Gianna's birthday on the 11th um, that uh, we would raise funds in her name and... and uh, um, your support will provide vital preschool education for the most vulnerable children in the Philippines and in Uganda. So uh, uh, we're going to be running, you can look up on the website, h4ki.org, or yeah, slash, slash or, yeah, dot org, and then slash Gianna, and you'll see that fund. So you could, uh, I think we're trying to raise about 36000 is that Mark? Right, Mark? And, uh, oh, what a dear. Uh, and then we'll run that through May 14th, which will be the one-year anniversary that she died in an ATV accident. Whew. <laughs> yeah. So let me give you a little update on COVID. Um, we, we were really nervous, weren't we, Ken, when this COVID thing hit. We wondered what kind of year we were going to have. And because of Ken's leadership and our staff on the ground here really putting their lives into our, our partners around the world and our employees around the world, we have seen absolutely amazing things happen this year. And what really came of it is this, this woman in the picture, she's, that's, that's Judith. And if you've been to, been to Africa, you've seen Judith, one of the most amazing people on the planet. She leads a team of over 40 of her staff and has done an amazing job. And here's what, personally for me, you know, a lot of times it's easy to say, oh, you know, our team here in the, in the States is so awesome. And they are. Nothing to take care of that. But I'm telling you, if it was just our amazing team in America and we've been sealed off from our projects and, and kids around the world for a year, it would have failed. And it has not failed. It has thrived. It has done so well. And the reason is because we got awesome people in all of those countries. And that's always been in my heart, not to be the person coming in to be, you know, we don't want to be Santa Claus. We don't want to go in and be giving handouts. We want to give hands up. And that's always been the philosophy of our ministry. And we really saw it happen in these last, last 12 months is because the heroes of the faith are the Judiths are the Hillary's, are the people on the ground doing the work and fulfilling it. And God's favor on our people in the Philippines and in, in uh, all of our destinations has been absolutely amazing because in some situations where the government, were, were, they were restricting travel of their people, when they would see Hope for Kids, they would let us through the roadblocks. And it was absolutely amazing. So let me get to this. Uh, Oh, back up again. I, I got to read that. There we are. Uh, Ugandans continue to follow the COVID protocols. Uh, no reported cases among the Ugandan staff or our sponsored children. Huh? Wow. Wow. Hope for Kids Crisis Relief has provided food for the whole family and learning packets and other supplies needed for continuing education. Children in 7th grade, Senior 4, and Senior 6 have returned in Uganda to in-person learning, and now that's continuing to open up, and international uh, visitor engagements with the local right now is, is prohibited. So we're stalled as far as taking our own teens, but the people on the ground in all of those countries have done absolutely amazing. Can, let's back up again. I'm sorry. But Judith is holding a radio. It's actually a solar-powered radio. And, and we actually bought two hours of airtime on, on a, uh, a radio station that covers uh, all of eastern uh, Uganda and some of western Kenya and had our teachers teaching the lessons over that uh, radio. And then, of course, in the village, you've always got some people with radios, but a lot of our kids did not. So we bought solar-powered radios like, like she's holding there. And again, they distributed them. They, it, it's just absolutely amazing when we'd hear these reports and distributed food and seed and, and uh, planted crops. And, and you can see it took place in Guatemala, the Philippines, and Mexico. It's just absolutely amazing what, what's, what's happened through this COVID time. Uh, so anyway, that's it. Thank you, light of the desert. I think we have one more slide, if I'm not mistaken. That Oh, more. 
Okay, so thank you, Light of the Desert, and we're going to keep going here. These are kids. These are Casolo kids saying hi. Look at there. And if we send out an e-blast, there may even be people in Africa that are tuned in right now. So if you are, good night. Uh, and this is, uh, this is uh, uh, all of our uh, uh, details there if you want to copy that down, uh, our website and phone number and all of that. So again, thank you so much for your participation and, and generosity. And Now, I want to I share a little from God's Word. Did you think I was done, Paul? You knew there was a little more? Okay, good, good. Uh, you're not, the timer doesn't go and buzzing and all, okay, all right. Uh, this isn't very long, but I love to share God's Word. That's the foundation of everything we do. It's, it's the source of everything. We often talk as a staff, if God took His hand of favor off us, and let me just be really clear that God's hand of favor is on us. The, the, the blessings we received this year, the, the uh, financial support, the uh, way things have gone internationally, that's, that's God. That's God. We often say if He took His hand of favor off us, we, we couldn't exist. We're very dependent on Him. And His Word promises all of that. There's biblical principles we follow that we know that if we follow biblical principles, they're true. And God, this is God's... Uh, way of moving in the world is through His people. And that just amazes me that God has chosen you and me to move through and be the answer to people's prayer around the world. We're spreading the kingdom of God throughout the world. We're restoring His kingdom. So when we see uh, Satan has ravaged uh, areas of the world and, and uh, we, we come in with the message of Jesus, the restoration and see the dignity return and the health return. And, well, anyway, it's a beautiful thing to be a part of, isn't it? And that's, 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 what we, uh, that's the privilege we have. Well, I want to share a, a quick scripture from 2 Corinthians 9, 6. And it's about generosity. And it says, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. That's a biblical principle. If uh, I've often said during COVID, this is not a time to retreat. This is not a time to get tight, you know, and, and, and hold for ourselves. It's a time to look for the opportunity to share the message of Jesus boldly in our neighborhoods, wherever we are. We're restricted to where we can go. So, you know, we, we have to use uh, uh, the, the setting in which we are uh, and use it the best we can but still being generous. Whoever sows generously will reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. I love that. And we've seen that this year in a, in a special way. God is able to bless you abundantly. See, it's like that's that principle. And God is able to bless you because you've been generous. So in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. And that's what we've been talking about this morning. And their righteousness endures forever. Verse 10 says, Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. This is not a verse I would have chosen for 2020. Right? I thought it was going to be a very disappointing, lean year. But instead, God has showed up in an incredible way. Verse 11 says, you will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. This is a testimony of God's provision right in the middle of a difficult time. The service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. And we don't seek this to, or, or broadcast what we're doing for attention to ourselves, but to give glory to God. That they'll uh, give, uh, I, I love that, also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. 
Because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. It's such a testimony. And, and in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. And verse 15 says, Thanks be to God for His indescribable gift. Isn't that a beautiful scripture? It's an amazing, promising scripture. And so timely at this time. Uh, uh, right in the middle of, of, of all of this, as we began to get creative and see how we can continue ministry around the world, we began hearing really sad stories. I mean, there's a lot of sad stories here in America. There's a lot of people who are unemployed. There's a lot of people who are losing their business and, and really suffering because of, of uh, COVID-19. But imagine living in, a marginal, uh, living in a marginalized life where your little trip to the market to deliver some vegetables you planted is your sole income and it keeps you from being hungry. Many of our people around the world live that kind of life because our focus is on those who are in extreme poverty. So multiply the difficulties that we face, multiply that, and maybe you're getting to see a little bit of what our people are going through. Many are struggling. We began, I know in Nepal we were, we were distributing um, uh, uh, personal uh, uh, protective uh, devices like this and, and different things, and they were saying, we need those, but we're hungry. People were starving. Um, I read the, that, um, uh, uh, I think it was the, w, the World Health Organization said that p this is a global tragedy. Poverty levels are back to the 90s. You know how far we've come? I think we were 25,000 children were dying every day on the planet. When, and when I started this, it was 42,000, I believe. But now it had gotten down to 20 to 25,000. And that's increased by another 10,000 just this year. That many people are suffering uh, like they did back in the 90s. We've had to, it's just been a setback. We've made gains all the way and now we're back. So to me... When I read this and see this principle, I go, God, we've got to be more generous. God, you've got to use us in a greater way because the hurting that we're hurting are hurting exponentially now. I mean, the, the hurt is, is indescribable for a lot of our people. And they're, they're barely surviving. And boy, that, that, that moves me. And I always tell our team, I think we're getting better at everything. And Ken's leadership, we, we're more streamlined. We're, we're, we're more professional. We're, we're doing better in every way with our finances and everything. And it's easy to, for us to focus on, we're doing well, we're doing well. But I always say, let's keep our eyes on those in need. Well, first of all, on Jesus. He's the provider, the one that gives us the seed and all of that. But that we look at the need in the world. And when we do, and we're moved by that, I think it creates a deeper generosity in us. There's an urgency. Um, last week I spoke about just the urgency of, of freedom and freedom of, uh, of speech, and, and, and there's so much in the cancel uh, uh, culture today that's prohibiting people from doing God's work. Uh, I remember when I was a little boy, uh, I would hear Billy Graham, you know, speak about how he was traveling all over the world and he was welcomed and he was in England quite often and the queen met him. And I used to think when I'd hear him say that, I've talked to kings and queens, I thought, oh, how cool is that? And now his son, just in the last couple years, has been banned from the UK because the message of the gospel is offensive and he's been called a bigot. And I've, much of my ministry has been with people who have suffered and, and had not had freedom of religion, freedom of speech, freedom of all, you know, in communist countries around the world. But the, the, the encouragement to me is those were the people that had the deepest faith. They were the more, most generous. They, they were like refined by the fire. And so I'm telling you, I think we're at a critical place 
in our lives as American Christians and around the world. I know many countries uh, have shut down the gospel, and it's not allowed anymore. And, and we have brothers and sisters in Asia and different places of the world who are being persecuted like never before. They're being imprisoned, murdered because of their faith in Jesus. Well, when I look at the Scripture, it never said we were going to live the easy life. And I say all this to say, I think this last year of difficulty, and it's sort of upset a lot of our usual things that we enjoy doing and we couldn't do them and, and pleasures and different things that we were used to spending money, that we've, we, our priorities have changed. We go, you know what matters? And I just feel this urgency, not only because I'm almost 70 and I know, uh, as a, my translator in Cuba said, your expiration date is near. Uh, 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 but, and there's always that urgency of saying, you know, we're passing through. You know, this is, not, this is not it right here. And we get focused on our needs here and accumulating this here and accumulating that. And I think when we're in these difficult times, we think, what really matters, right? I know we had a couple that uh, called our office or contacted our office and said, we should go on, on cruises. And we didn't go on a cruise, so here's money for a well. And that's not unusual. Uh, Kristen and I were talking the other night about when we went through the recession, when she was on our staff, and we saw the same thing, didn't we? We just saw, this is going to be terrible, yet people became generous. And this is a good sign. And, and here's, uh, here's, here's kind of my nutshell here. I believe we are living in an incredible time. You can read your Bible and read a lot of what's going on on planet Earth. And you and I have been chosen to live in this day. And there's an urgency that we have to do what we can while we still can. We have to do what we can, and there may be some barriers. There may be some difficulties we face. There, it may get more and more difficult to speak about Christ. On most of our university campuses, uh, uh, much of the teaching is against a God. I was with some young people last night, and, and a lot of that came out. The skepticism of a living God, of, of all that we traditionally believed in just a decade ago, two decades ago, is no longer taught and it's almost anti. And so we come out, we get educated in this way. So we're the salt and light in maybe one of the darkest periods in, our, in the history of our nation and of the world. I believe, as Ephesians 6 says, we don't fight against flesh and blood. This is a, this is a demonic struggle. This is a paladin. The enemy knows his time is short. And he's raging against people. And so there's all kinds of awful, evil things going on in our nation and around the world. So I just say that. I don't like to dwell on negative things. But I just say that to say, as Pastor Paul said at the beginning, you can't be lukewarm in this setting. You're, you're going to have to choose. And if you choose to be a follower of Jesus and fully engaged with Him and these principles are in your life about sowing and reaping, um, let's, let's, let's search our hearts because this is really an important, uh, important time in our, in, our, in our life. But not just that, but um, in, in, our, uh, in, in the place that God has us right now. So... Uh, let me just say a little, a, 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 a little bit about this biblical, con, uh, this biblical principle I've been sharing because there's, there's always an abuse. Now, what I've read today pretty much says, if you give, God will give. And so there's this movement that's all across the world that says, this is your way to get rich. This is not a get rich scheme. That's never the goal. I'm going to give this so I get more. But a lot, we call it American gospel. It's all over the world, especially in Africa, I've seen it. And they think that uh, if we do this, then we're going to be getting, gaining and gaining. So it's like calculating. I gave this much, so he's going to give me this much. That's not what it says. And it's never the goal of, of getting rich. In fact, the Bible does not encourage getting rich. It says in 1 Timothy, uh, Paul writing to Timothy says, But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, we can take nothing out of it. 
But if we have food and clothing, we'll be content with that. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish, harmful desires to plunge people into ruin and destruction. Verse 10, for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. But you, man of God, verse 11, flee from all this, pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, gentleness. Fight the good fight. Take hold of eternal life, which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of so many. It just breaks my heart when I see uh, the American gospel going around the world and people using that to, and usually it's just the pastors that get rich and nobody else is, and it's, it's kind of a sad commentary around the world. But I always said, and I learned this at the Lutheran Bible Institute, read a scripture, read it in context, what was the author saying to the people at that time, and dissect that and keep it in context of the entire word, and then how does it apply to me? And a lot of these biblical principles apply to us here in 2021. And it's, it's beautiful if we follow these and are, and are not uh, consumed by attaining things in this life and, 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 and uh, uh, only focusing on these few short years that we, we have in this life, but instead laying up treasures in heaven, in heaven what it's all about. So, um, was that a little too preachy? It was okay? Okay, because it's, it's God's Word, and we need to be reminded of it, and we need to embrace it and live it. Because there's some beautiful things about generosity that are here that if they're kept in context, God's hand of favor will be on you. And He will bless you. And I visited with a donor this last week and he was talking about he's a very generous man. And just how God is continuing to bless him beyond his expectation. We said that's the principle. Be generous and God my parents, we were really poor in Iowa, you know, he, my dad was a little mechanic, he made about $400 a week, seven kids, am I telling the truth, Rachel? Yeah, and, but was it our mom that always said you can't give out God? I think it was our mom, either our mom or dad said, and I used to get so upset because he would write a check to the, the church first. If he got $412, you know, he wrote out his check for like $41.20 or something like that. And I used to get so upset because we needed it. Yet he said, your first fruits go to God. And he modeled that for us, didn't he? And that really, really resonates with this principle that you can't outgive God. And you know what? We never went hungry. We, we, we didn't realize we were poor. We, we had everything we needed and especially the love of a family. Uh, each, each of you, verse 7, just to wrap this up, says, each of you should give what you've decided in your heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. So the challenge is there. How do we respond? Let's examine our hearts, ask God to help make changes, and possibly in our lifestyle, uh, to make a greater impact in the world. The need to be the light for Jesus Christ in the world right now in 2021 has never been greater as far as I'm, I'm concerned. And the challenge to be more generous with our time, with our resources, with our attitudes. Oh, it's easy to complain. Let's be positive. Let's love people. Let's, let's uh, really let them in on uh, God's unconditional love. And uh, it's never been more critical. So let's be a blessing, okay? Are we together? Is this good? All right. Loving God, thank you for your word. It's so clear. Thank you for the opportunity to speak it here in this beautiful sanctuary and, and, and around the nation as people watch online. I pray that God, you're, uh, you will speak to each one of us individually. Because I know this isn't a corporate thing that you want to say. You want to speak to us individually. This is the change that needs to take place. Be more generous. Trust me. Release. Care for those in need. It's a critical time in Jesus' name. We thank you and give you glory. In Christ's name, amen.